hi sorry i've been gone for a couple weeks i just have some really quick things to say before the video starts this is my like hour long discussion with my friend about midnight sun the first half is like going through the original 10 things from my first midnight sun video and like whether or not they're in the book the second half is just like new fun stuff um that we liked or didn't like from the midnight sun book i personally like the second half better i think it's funnier but i also love like the first half too because i just think we just have great twilight conversations so here is the timestamp for when going through the 10 things from twilight from new midnight sun that i wanted to be in there starts and then uh this is the timestamp for when we start talking about like new stuff all right i will see you guys soon enjoy the video bye take a deep breath <laughs> okay hi everyone welcome back my name is morgan this is my channel pisces paperbacks and this is my friend tatiana hi. she also has a channel Say the name of your channel. Tatiana Kenny Smith. It's just her name. Yeah, but can't, um, they can't spell it, but I'm yeah. sure. I will link it. This is going to be my review video of Midnight Sun. I made a video in early May when the book was first announced that really has... It. Yes, yes, it's out. It's in the world. But I made a video a cut like the day after it was announced and with 10 things that I really want to be in this book. Uh, that video is my most viewed video of all time. It has... 2,400 something views right now, mm -hmm. which is crazy. I'm really happy that everybody liked it because I love it. I, I love Twilight so much. Um, but now I'm going to talk about those 10 things and whether or not Stephanie Meyer delivered. Uh, I am hanging out with my friend Tatiana today. I actually came over to help her with her Edward Cullen New Moon puzzle. She is um, one of my friends that I would say the few people I know who likes, cares about, and knows about uh, Twilight as much as I do, if not more. Would you say you're equally obsessed? I would say equally. We have some different strengths in yes. things, like as far as where our knowledge lies. Yeah. Uh, she has definitely. she has the illustrated um, guide. I had the director's handbook from the first movie, so like different sources of knowledge in terms of extra books that we own, yeah. but um, we both love Twilight, we're both Team Edward. This was a long time coming in terms of something we both wanted, so I'm really excited that she's here today to talk about Midnight Sun with me. It's time, okay. We have lists, we're ready to go, we're prepared. We also, before... I asked her to film this video with me. We had just spent the previous, what, <laughs> like, two hours, hour and a half? Like, two and a half. Two and a half hours, hours. just talking about Twilight as well. So, you know, it's a favorite topic of ours, you could say. Yeah, we talk about it a lot. Which ones we, we can say, video chat to preface, stuff. my favorite book of the series is Twilight. My favorite son. <laughs> son. My favorite movie. <laughs> I can't say words. My favorite book is Eclipse. My favorite movie, controversial, and this is a new opinion that I'm still developing. I think my favorite movie is New Moon, for some reason. I just like that one. I do think my favorite movie is Twilight, because it has such a special, it's the one I've seen the most, for yeah. sure. Um, with commentary, also. I've never watched any oh of my the movies God. with commentary. Now to get to the main event. I'm going to go down the list, and this video is going to start off, we're going to go through the 10 things, saying whether or not the book delivered on what I asked and demanded of Stephanie Meyer. And then we're going to do uh, new Midnight Sun content we liked versus, well not versus, but also new Midnight Sun content we did not like. I don't think I have to say this, this is absolutely a spoiler filled review. It's barely a review, it's more of a discussion. So if you haven't read it yet, I would not recommend watching this video. If you haven't read it but you want to know what I thought, I'm just going to say I loved it beyond anything I can describe with words. Uh, it's everything I wanted, everything I dreamed of, and even things I didn't know about. So this might actually be my new favorite This is probably book. my new favorite book as yeah. well. I was reading it and as I was reading it I was like, I'm going to reread this book so many times it will fall apart. Like it will disintegrate in my hands because I love it so much. That's six <laughs> minutes of intro. I think it's time to dive in. So starting from 10, going up to one, did Midnight Sun deliver on my demands? Because legally, as I said in my last video, if it did not, I will sue. And that's what matters here, is me being happy specifically, personally. Okay, number 10, scenes with Edward's parents. 
Did it deliver? No. Um, <laughs> there are no scenes in the entire 700 pages where Edward is even human. Like, yeah, there's really nothing about him as in his human life. It's like we know that they forget most of the stuff or it becomes fuzzy, but we, like, still do get some sort of overview from, yeah. like, Rosalie or Jasper where they obviously still remember stuff. Like, stuff. There's things. really nothing in Edward's... Um, backstory. Backstory, like, from his human point of view. However, if we want to talk about just what we get, like, new Edward backstory, there is a significant amount of time spent talking about the, like, the few years, like, five years that Edward spent on his own killing murderers. Yeah. Like, away Sex from Carlisle. Story. When he, like, the few years when he was, like, killing humans and hunting, like, a significant amount of time. I was very much surprised by how much was dedicated to that, plus there was a lot of detail. That was one of the things that I wanted from the book when we talked about just independently, independently about things that we wanted. That was one thing on my personal list was time about vigilante Dexter Edward. So number nine was Himbo Emmett. I would say that it kind of, like, on the one hand, Emmett is there. You get more of him, and he's kind of uh, reaffirmed to be a big goof. But he's not really funny. No. Um, I feel like the fandom has given him way more credit than he's really due in terms of having fun personality. Is he dumb jock? Yes. But he, is he himbo? He's very supportive of Rosalie. Yeah. He is supportive of Edward, but he's also like, you know what, bro? If you kill her, you kill her. It's totally fine. And I'm like... Yeah, I don't know about that. He's also, like, again, not funny. Right. Like, we've really given him a lot of credit in terms of being, like, this the comic relief kind of, like, bro jock character that we all know and love. He says it like it is. Not but, like, to lighten the mood. We have definitely, and by we, I mean, like, the fans and people who make viral Tumblr posts about Twilight have definitely projected this personality onto him because it is 100% not there. In the book, like, no. at all. No. Real sad. Yeah. Number eight, Edward's first crush. Uh, he never had one. Bella is his first crush. He Can never looked at a woman, he just thought of guns and war. Number seven, Rosalie's actual first impression of Bella. Let's just say that this book made Rosalie e an even bigger bitch yeah. with even less nuance. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? It was bad. Just, I think it's also <laughs> obviously influenced by the fact that apparently Edward fucking hates Rosalie. Like, not literally, but he but doesn't like, yes, like her. Like, he doesn't like her. He doesn't think that she has any thoughts. positive thoughts. He has, he has no positive thoughts about her, and he, she, he thinks she is not capable of positive things. He literally calls her mind a stagnant pool. Yeah. In the in the second page. And, like, whenever she's thinking, she's just thinking about, like, her reflection. Yeah. Like, her errant thoughts are about her reflection. Yeah. From the moment... Oh, you're big. Yeah. <laughs> they were just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you get, um, a little bit more information about, like, when they first made Rosalie. Yeah. And when Rosalie rescues Emmett. But, like, they... She... He literally didn't like her at all until the night she rescued Emmett and then no, she and then he was like that was the night we became family. I'm like you she's been alive for four years. He it's just like it's like beyond the fact that he doesn't maybe like like her, or agree with her, or think she has faults, he seems to have zero kind thoughts about her. Yeah. For someone he she he spends so much time with. For someone who is ostensibly his family. Yeah, like his sister. Yeah. He calls her. But he doesn't like her. And to answer my direct question, uh, Be Rosalie's first impression of Bella is that she's she thinks Bella is stupid and ugly and boring. <laughs> and, and stupid. Yeah, Rosalie's not helped by Edward's opinions of her. I mean, like, it's not just Edward's opinions of her. And maybe he's projecting, but all of the things she says are pretty terrible, shallow, mean things. Yeah. Like, I would have loved just maybe, like, a sense of, like, why she likes cars. 
or something. You know, yeah. there's any sort of, like, Like, there's no parent. nuance or complexity. <laughs> like, she has no stray thoughts about, like, politics. <laughs> like, she's just like, God, I'm so pretty. Or I can't like, believe my brother didn't want to bang me. <laughs> When I was born yeah. as a vampire. Or just vitriolic insults. Yeah, she's just, like, mean. Yeah. It's just, like, God, what the fuck? Number six, the clearing scene in the Field of Wildflowers where Bed Bedward... <laughs> That's Edward, <their> name. <laughs> Bedward, Edward and Bella say they love each other for the first time. I've waited 12 years for this scene. It lasted 50 pages, <laughs> and it was literally perfect. It was, it added so much depth to the scene in terms of what Edward was going through. Yeah. A lot of depth, because that's this, that's the scene where Edward kind of goes through the transformation where, like, suddenly he's like, I'm not gonna kill you. Yes. Like, and it's like, from, from Bella's perspective, it just kind of happens, and he's like, hmm, I'm okay now. But from Edward's perspective, it's like this huge, like, life-changing scene. It was so beautiful. I teared up to be honest, and I loved it so much. It was such a long scene, and I was like, yes, yes, this is perfect. And there was a lot more build-up to it, too. A lot more build-up, yeah. yeah. It was so good. Yeah, I can't wait to put a bookmark there and just flip back to it when I'm sad, just for a pick-me-up. Like, I love Edward so much. <laughs> I love him so much, and I love their love. <laughs> like, Loki, he's, like, a major jerk. Oh, he's... A kind of a book, douche. Yeah, he's, he's a douche. like been revealed as being like, no, not yeah. great, but also like, I love it. <laughs> I love him so much. This book does him. reveal some new character flaws yeah. that we will talk about later. Um, number five, Edward and Alice's first meeting. It's he's not even there when Alice first introduces herself to the family. You get like a paragraph about it, but um, their first meeting is basically Alice walking up to him, hugging him, and then him going, ah. You're my sister Alice, because he can read her thoughts. So it was a little anticlimactic for me. Yeah, it was still, like, good information. Um, and, like, we did learn about how New it happened. New information, yeah. Uh, but it wasn't... It wasn't that great. Right, like, he wasn't there. She purposely came when he was not yeah, there she, to avoid it. She purposely introduced herself to the family when he wasn't there to avoid a confrontation with Jasper. Right. Insight, but just not the thing that you wanted. Uh, number four, Emo Edward. <laughs> Emo Edward. I would say, I think this book was right on the money in terms of how emo he was. What are your thoughts? I expected him to be even more melodramatic and theatrical about his emo -ness. I think, like, I think my expectations were maybe, like, a little too high. Maybe I expected him to have more of a sense, like, a dark sense of humor, make, like, I, I don't know. And it might just be that, like, I'm just, like, <laughs> I'm low but I'm just like I'm not in a great place mentally. Like, I just like didn't even notice. I'm just like this is normal. This is normal state of mind. Nah, he literally <laughs> compares himself to Hades, and like every time they interact, he's I really, like I did really like that. Every time they interact, he's like God. Another time, another every conversation is another uh, po pomegranate seed. I love it. Leading I her into the darkness of my world. That I'm like, how is that not great. the most melodramatic thing you've ever heard in your entire life? Like, the entire book, he's like, God, I'm dragging her down with me into the depths of hell where none of us have a soul. But, like, he wasn't like that, though. Like, that's, like, how... That, I feel like that's us projecting on him. He, he was, was just like, like that. Literally every... Like, like, I don't have a soul. Like, I don't know. I wanted more, like, size. Like, more, like, staring in a dark room. Like, sitting in... <laughs> you wanted more <laughs> passive emo-ness <laughs> instead of active emo thoughts? I guess he. I guess he did. You like, wanted he him. He did sit in the darkness. I loved when he was sitting in the darkness in her room and just like killed a spider and was like. I did love that. I just. I just. Yeah. I just didn't notice the emo ness. I wanted it to be like slapping me in the face every new page. It was to but me. I just got like used to it immediately, and I was oh. just like every other page. I was like. <laughs> There were every, like, five pages, there was something he thought where I was like, God, shut the fuck up. But, like, in a good way? Does that make sense? It doesn't have to yeah, make sense. Yeah, no, it's it, how it, it makes sense. I just think, I think my emo tolerance is just, like, way up higher. there. Just way high up there. Number three, fun and stupid vampire facts. Not really. We didn't get any fun and super va stupid vampire facts, which is 
tragic in my opinion but it is what it is so um, number two no personality Bella so in my original video I had talked about how in the draft it becomes pretty clear that the only reason ever likes Bella is because she doesn't have a personality is because he can't read her mind because when you're not in her mind she really doesn't have a personality that as a reader you can like comprehend because it's just basically like seeing a person who's like not doing anything and you never really interact with them so you don't really know what they're like yeah i was very and i thought it would be funny if this whole book was this like long ass book where she never gets a personality but you're still supposed to think he loves her i think that would have been funny however to my surprise bella has more personal personality in this book than she does in like twilight new moon and eclipse combined i think yeah. she gets some personality in breaking dawn personally yeah but like shocking like new dialogue mm -hmm. uh extended scenes basically um like you get to see so in twilight from bella's perspective edward just ignores her for a month um after the car accident but before like the blood typing day i also looked up a detailed timeline of twilight and memorized it basically you know we were on yeah. the phone <laughs> you're on the phone at the time yeah um but there's like a month in between where she like is not interacting with him but she's kind of staring at him all the time like god he's so pretty and then in the draft it also is very much skimmed over it's not really mm -hmm. covered but in this book you actually see examples of him observing her through other people's minds during the month where he's ignoring her or even in biology class or even in biology yeah. class and it's like he from his perspective he's like she is a really kind selfless very attentive person yeah. and like look at all these examples of her interacting with her friends and you see like multiple scenes where she's extremely compassionate mm -hmm. and like friendly sometimes yeah. even funny and like so much more information about her her likes her dislikes in you actually in a twilight when she's describing uh arizona to edward it's just like a couple sentences where it's like gives you like an impression of kind of the whole description whereas in this you actually get the paragraphs of description and stuff yeah. like that i think a little bit of it could have been edited down but i was shocked that bella's super likable yeah very funny yes. like just seems like a sweet person yeah all around good person um this is one thing where this is more reflection on edward is like it still seems like he only likes her because he can't read her mind because like everyone else even if they're a nice person like angela or something he's like Oh, they're so predictable and stupid and it's just like well that's because you can read, read their, their mind. mind yeah <laughs> it's nice to see that she actually does yes. have some personality. Does have a personality you get to learn a little bit more about like her passions like what she wants to do with her life and it's like it's nowhere in any of the original books so it's a little bit like stephanie meyer was like i'm tired of people roasting me uh for not giving my main character that much of a personality but I loved it. I can definitely see the merit from like the projection side and also that Bella would not necessarily like make observance of Ob observations about, about herself. herself. Yeah. Whereas Edward would note them from the outside. Yeah. Uh but yeah, no, she definitely has a personality yeah. in this book. And she's like funny. She's probably the funniest. I don't know about funny. Or does, We talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple times in the books where Bella will make a joke and Edward will be like not funny but from Edward's perspective you literally hear his thoughts where he's like I'm re I'm willing to put up with a lifetime of bad jokes for this woman and I'm like G you don't even think she's funny and you're in love with her like I don't think Bella's that funny but I thought she made some good jokes yes that's more what it was and I was expecting there to be a lot more humor in this book just because of the, yeah, like Emmett or some other mind reading, you know, humans around there. Just opportunity for humor. Um, this book had, I would say, a distinct lack less. of comedic <laughs> relief. It was like less than humor. And like you said, even even the jokes Bella made that I really appreciated and enjoyed, turns out she's the funniest one <laughs> out of all of them. Out of, yeah. Nobody in this book has a sense of humor. Except she's the funniest shining light and she's like no comedian. That's that's more of the thing. Yeah. Is like she is the funniest character. So just, yeah. That is what, and Edward doesn't even like it. He's like, she's not funny. Yeah. <laughs> then number one, the most important thing I wanted out of Midnight Sun, horny Edward. 
And I will say, we definitely got it. I'm yeah. so happy. I was reading it and I was like, yes, he's feeling his hormones come come alive for the first time in his life. Um, I literally sent a Snapchat to Tatiana when I read this, but there's a scene, I think it's in the like clearing scene when they're like talking in the field of wildflowers. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I wish I could find it, but I don't know where it is. But he something along the lines of like he felt something inside him come to life and rise up for the first time and it is his heart and his feelings are what it's actually talking about but the first time I read this I was like is he getting a boner right now <laughs> right now while they're confessing their love to each other and there's a lot of times where he's like god I wish I was a real man like, so that I could has, touch her he definitely has like multiple emotional boners emotional boners one there's might a, say. there's a couple times in the second half of the book where he like puts a hand on her hip and for a second it's like i can feel her her the curves of her womanly body yeah, like, and um and then he's like no i can't think about like that like a deep stir in my like not soul <laughs> i know yeah um, it's it's yeah. a lot of emotional horniness that yeah. does imply real horniness there there i feel like i don't i know there's at least like one ellipses into like you know like they're not gonna say it but the ellipses is like suggestive sexual. so the sexual ellipses yeah and i would definitely say that it's on the same level of horniness as as from bella's perspective maybe a yeah. little bit less because he's less he's more scared of it but honestly there's not that much horniness in twilight it's later yeah. on it's, it's more an eclipse yeah, I, 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 in my, in my brain to compare them, I think Bella's horniness is, um, more often, but maybe less obvious, less suggestive to mm -hmm. sex, maybe, yeah. but she very obviously, like, wants to, wants to make him. out with him, yeah. and he's, like, very excited, yeah. whereas Edward will just have, like, a very intense sentence. Yeah, and then it'll go away again, and then they'll be like, I gotta control just, myself. And it's often, like, centered around, like, her body in, like, a meaningful way. Like, yeah. Like, the curves. Like, I wish I could and, like, hold oh, her wait, in my let me arms. stop that thought before I go too far. Yeah. But, like, the touch of her skin on, like, her stomach. It was a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Horny, it indeed was. So, yeah. I feel so vindicated. Welcome to part two. Things we liked uh, that were not on the original list, but are new content meaning mostly things that were not in the original draft, unfinished draft from 2008, um, which was almost exactly the first 250 pages of the book. Shockingly the same. It was <laughs> shockingly the same. Uh, you, there were some changes. I'm not saying it was exactly the same. I can think of a couple specific changes that were uh, different and like differently phrased or differently delivered um, in the real book versus the manuscript. But the only reason I noticed them is because I've read the manuscript three times in the last year and ten times in the last ten years. Yeah. And I'm obsessed with Twilight. Overwhelmingly, as a whole, the first 150, the same, 250 pages were almost exactly the same. Like, scene for scene, almost line for line. <laughs> word for like, word. Like, it was a little shocking to the, like, she could have changed everything. Yeah. And it would have still been canon. Right. Because she's the one writing it. It was a rough draft. And the original manuscript, she wrote 12 years ago. Like, she could have scrapped it completely and started over, and it would have been totally fine. Yeah. And it still would have been real. Right. There are some things I think she maybe, you know, should have edited, considering time passing. Yeah. Um, Where's the pen? Like, there's just some things that maybe, like, aren't as appropriate as they were back then. Like, the secretary of the school sexualizing him, um, or... The I have a major problem with the Tanya and her sisters having sex with men. Yeah, it's a um, plot hole to me. A casually thrown in there, thrown away line about how they have sex with humans all the time and it works great, and then it's such like an issue later. Like there could be rationalizations for it. However, it just feels lazy to throw it in there like without any sort of justification. It's almost it feels like an oversight. Yeah. To Should we talk about that now? So basically, right, when we we're gonna say things we, we liked, were gonna say things we liked first. But we can we can start with something we didn't like. Um, in when Ever goes to Alaska the, after the very first time he sees Bella, page twenty five. Page twenty five. Um, Tanya comes to talk to him because she thinks he's there to like be like, yeah, I want to be in a relationship. Um, but he, in his inner monologue, is like the Denali sisters came to their consciousness over time, m largely led by the fact that they liked sleeping with human men. Um, I will quote this sentence that I've quoted a million times because I literally hate it. There's a sentence in there where they said, where he goes, now the men they loved lived. 
I fucking hate that sentence. I don't know why. It's in the draft, too. I think it's awfully phrased and put together. But it implies that they have sex with human men, and it's... It, they specifically said in the thousands. Yeah. She said they were thousands of human men. So she it, had thousands of conquests, I think is so what she says. It, it begs the question, if the physicality and the danger, is it only a problem because Edward's uh, only 100 years old? Because the Denali sisters are older than Carlisle by right. several hundred years. So they are old, and they probably have a little bit more self-control. Mm -hmm. So, like, is it because he's young? Is it actually just because he doesn't want to give it up before he's married? Like, is it, like, the extra call of the blood? But, like, Loki, he's said that he's gone over that, so it's like, kind of hard. Is it just because he is the, the person he is? Is or... it just because he's, like, a virgin? Like yeah. Like said, but, like, not just because he doesn't want to, but because he's never experienced it at all, so he's just too afraid of how he'll react. It, like, just doesn't make sense. Sense. It's like such a throwaway line in the book, but I'm like, isn't that major? Yeah. Doesn't that come back to bite you in the ass in like three books? Right. And just not just the fact that he's like worried about, but he's like, I will kill you. It's fact. No one. If we it, even kiss. It's like implied that multiple times. I think that no one's ever done this before. Yeah. Um. It's like so clearly they have. Is it because they're women? Which is also right because like the whole thing that they like with the baby, especially they're like Renesmee, they're like. The, this is there's been no possibility for this to exist because like vampire women don't have babies babies and and w they don't have sex crossing with like men and female humans but like so if it's like reverse and it like feels like a weird gender role thing that shouldn't be an issue yeah um and also if they say that she's like the original succubus so then like by reasoning just like incubuses could exist and they do. They do. It is something that um, there's a word for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it just, yeah, it seems like a major, major oversight to casually throw that in and just be like, no big deal. They just have, because, like, it's such a big deal. It's ladies. such a big deal. It's like a, okay, we will move on yeah. now. But <laughs> that is that is one of our major gripes, and it's literally one of the smallest things in the book. Right. Which is what makes it so much worse. Okay. It just feels lazy. Okay. Yes. So should we start with the things we didn't like then? Sure. Let's then okay. We'll go, then we'll end Let's on a run down note. the list of things we didn't like. Um, Bella's favorite candies are black licorice and sour patch kids. Horrible. Fucking disgusting. Both of them. Gross. Awful. Like, I'm, what? At least the one is popular, but like black licorice is. Who like, the fuck likes black licorice? Well, I'm sorry if you like black licorice, but you're wrong. So it just screams like old timey, not like other girls. Plus, like relatable things, which seems kind of low key a trend throughout all of Bella's like new dancers. personalities <laughs> new personalities like one thing that's like established Bella like I'm not like other girls and then one thing that's like super relatable like to her favorite on. movies are Pride and Prejudice and Star or, Wars yeah or like and like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when we haven't seen her watch well, we've seen her watch two movies the two movies she watches are Romeo and Juliet in the beginning of New Moon and the um, musical the mo the action movie she goes to see with Mike and oh. Jacob yeah, okay, three. The action movie she goes to see with Mike and Jacob, and I guess the zombie movie she goes to see with... Or with Jessica. Jess. But, and then, like, the musical that she watches during her honeymoon, which she doesn't even note the name of. Right. And we're supposed to believe that she saw Star Wars she in has theaters? She too many favorite movies to name. Like, she's too overwhelmed with so her love just, and favorites. But I think the one that really bothers us the most is the black licorice yeah, that and was just, Sour Patch Kids because I was like, it's awful. over, it's overly specific and unnecessary, but also so specific that I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I think a great average, relatable, long-lasting, like evergreen candy to like would be like a classic, like like gummy worms or gummy bears, Kit Kats, Kit Kats, something like something just like bland, but like everyone likes them. But yeah. still classic. That seems like Bella esque yeah. instead of like. Doing two ends of the spectrum. And yeah. Just Doesn't off. make sense. Also, the section was just so name dropping. It was so name dropping yeah, in terms of like rough. titles of things. Yeah. Um, Some people liked it. I think it's I just liked not it great a lot. For evergreen content. Yeah. I liked it, it a lot. Little... I think it could have been edited down. That's, I think, is a trend that this book was always going to be popular just because of what it is. Yeah. So everybody was like, yeah, put in whatever you want. So I think it's a lot of like fan wish fulfillment in terms of like us wanting to know who Bella is as a person, but yeah. it was a little bit long for like, me. Um, number two things we didn't like. Edward hates his family. Yeah. Like, he has almost no kind thoughts about Emmett or 
Rosalie. Or Jasper. Or Jasper. He honestly thinks Jasper's, like, this nothing weakling with no personality. <laughs> yeah. He's um, just like, God, like, oh, he's so, he's just like, why? He spends mm-hmm. the whole book annoyed with Alice because he's like, every, all of your visions are wrong. I don't care if they're right. Although he does seem to, like, get along with her better. Yeah, like, he talks with her, actually. They get a relationship. Yeah. They see their relationship. They have some banter. Whereas the others are, like, he's just really dismissive He has of... no relationship with them. Esme is a non-entity, basically. She has, like, a couple more lines that I, made me like her more and made Tatiana like her less. Yeah. But, um, like, that's it. Carlisle, he's just kind of a hero worship kind of situation. It's less of a father figure, to be honest. Like, when do they do fatherly things? The Christmas. Oh, We'll get to that in a yeah. second. Um, but yeah, mostly Edward is just so like dismissive of Rosalie and Emmett. It poisons every scene with the whole family. Yeah, I, that was something I was really looking forward to was seeing them like have a family dynamic and care about each other. But it almost like it's now like can that like they don't care about each other and are very inconsiderate of each other for the most part, except for like Esme, Carlisle, Alice, and Edward who are in like one camp. Yeah, and the rest are just like antagonist yeah it's kind of annoying another thing we don't like is that all of bella's friends fucking suck they all hate her <laughs> literally oh, they all they're oh, jessica people. is so mean like like if we want to talk about fake friends literally <laughs> she's bella's best friend in the entire series and we always get the you know the sense that she's kind of shallow she's maybe yeah. not the smartest like gossip but although she's valedictorian, she's valedictorian. <laughs> But she's, like, you know, maybe a little shallow, maybe a little, like, boy crazy. But we never get the impression that she's, like, outwardly Malicious. mean. Literally the entire... Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Are we yelling? No. Hi. Yeah. Are we filming? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're filming in the review of Midnight Sun for my YouTube channel. Oh. Okay. I was going to ask if you wanted margaritas, but... Yeah, and like I think we'll be done in like twenty minutes. <laughs> so we have to be. Your phone's gonna die. I know. <laughs> we, oh can, we don't stop talking about it ever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. My margarita's We're done. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's like, God, Bella's not even pretty. She's not even smart. Why does Mike like her? Why does Edward like her? If Edward likes Bella, um, I'm way prettier than her. I could totally be his type. Like, she's literally so mean. <laughs> so mean. On top of Edward being like, she's lewd. <laughs> like, lewd, trash, because she Yeah, Edward also sexual. hates her. <laughs> Edward also hates Thoughts. her, but from <laughs> Edward's perspective, totally valid to hate her. But he's also, like, mean about it, though. Yeah, he's also <laughs> mean about it, so it's a little, meh, whatever. Um, it's, just, it's just so over the top. Like, it just wants to get just, like, no redeeming quality. Yeah. Much um, like the Wuthering Heights character. Yeah. Uh, Bella's friends suck. Uh, Mike. N- Mike is a little creepy. A little creepy. A little, meh, a little bit creepy. Yeah. Um, next thing we don't like, the hunt scene where Emmett, Edward, and Carlisle are hunting James. Honestly, we just thought it was boring. Yeah. It was too long. Yeah. That's really it. it was, I don't have any details about why I right. didn't like it. It was just a little long, like a little boring. Like, the fifth round of them texting Alice was like, was like, we got it. Okay, we're done. <laughs> oh, and we already said it makes Rosalie worse. The book just makes Rosalie worse. <laughs> uh, last thing we really didn't like was at the end, Edward is, they're literally at prom, and Edward's like, yeah, I guess I'll dump her when she's healed. No, I feel like in the hospital. <laughs> in the hospital, he's like, I'll dump her when she's healed. And then at prom, he's like, okay, I'll just wait until something bad happens, and then I'll dump her. Because this is what we talked about when this first happened. Um, it undermines completely the idea that he trusts in her decisions at all and what she wants. He that her feelings are strong. Valid at all. Valid um, but yeah. also, during the course of Twilight, which, by the way, happens over the course of a year and a half, it happens from... Um, the January 2005, right. the book ends December 2006. 
So they get yeah. married in, in they get married in August of 2006. And so the bulk of their relationship when they're happy and no one's trying to kill them happens, again, I know the timeline a little too well, happens between May and September of 2005. Right. That is four months. Yeah. Yeah. May, June, July, August, September. Five months. Okay. So. But like end of May, so. End of May to September. Beginning, beginning of September. So that's like five months. Um, from Bella's perspective, which, that's the only time of their relationship that we actually don't get to right. see in the book. And that they're happy and, that's and they're normal. like They're dating, you know? They're, yeah. like, together. From Bella's perspective, we are always thinking about that time as, like, when they were happy, when they were together, they're trying to get back to that. And then when they finally do get back to that, they're like, okay, we're going to get married in two months. Yeah. And that's, like, the summer between Eclipse and Breaking Dawn. Yeah. Um... But from Edward's perspective, we realize that actually, <laughs> the, whole the whole time that they were supposedly happy, he was just planning to dump her yeah. the second anything happened that would justify him. Like, it wasn't even like he had a realization at her birthday party. It was yeah. that he had the realization four or five or six months ago. And, and then, like, constantly, like, lying to her and rationalizing it by saying, like... I love you so much, and I'll yeah, just... Yeah, like, I mean, just, like, right now, I'll stay with you forever, but, like, I know I'm not going to. And it was, like, like it, for me, it undermines a lot of his character, because he's supposed to be so devoted, but he's, like, from the beginning, planning to leave her. Because he's so devoted, but, like, it's, it, like, yeah, it's upsetting. What the fuck was that? I also, when I was reading it, I was, like, I forgot that... Um, well, actually, my first thought was I forgot that Twilight ends in such a bittersweet, kind of almost melancholy kind of way, where she's like, you know, you won't change me into a vampire now, but we'll still get to be together for forever. And from T Bella's perspective, you know, it's not that bad of, like, that sad of an ending. It just is what it is. From Edward's perspective, it is a melancholy, yeah. like, almost a downer of yeah. an ending. He, yeah, it's really sad. And, like, yeah, it's just, like, the whole part of the relationship that we could at least justify was, like, oh, like, they were happy together and, like, normal. We just didn't see it. It's, like, no, no they weren't. true. Because apparently they were happy, but the he whole was, like, time he was, like, am I happy? And planning on breaking up with her. And, and yeah, and then, like, they're apart from the new moon breakup longer than they've ever been together. It really reduces their um, falling in love to, like, you the, know, like month. two weeks in March. Yeah. <laughs> So, that was a little annoying. I didn't like yeah. that ending because it makes it just feel, like, more toxic and unbalanced. Yeah, and I don't know. Bad taste in the mouth. Put me off a little yeah. bit. Still love it. Still want the rest love of the book. book. Love the Edward all the way. Love the book so much. I love Edward. He is my boyfriend in my heart. So, um, but yeah, that was horrible. A little rough. <laughs> um, now, on to things. We really liked, really liked, really loved. Starting off. The party part. Alice's powers. So good. We get multiple examples of actual, real life, practical applications yes. of Alice's yes. future powers. Oh, so like, good. it's incredible. The scene, I mean, the really small one is when they go to get the key for her truck. And right. she, like, in her mind, decides on all the places she's going to check, the whole, sees the future of when she's yeah. going to, where she's going to find the keys. And then, like, goes just goes and, goes and does it. The other example is that the coolest one is after Bella's hurt on the way to the hospital, um, Alice looks into the future and figures out the exact perfect way to set up the crime scene with, like, so that no one doubts her. And it's literally, she'll, like, go into the future, see the, something yeah. that is kind of a problem, rewind, make a new decision, go to the future, okay, it's perfect, let's keep going to like, the plan. correct. Like, and then the chapter everything. ends with, like, the sentence, um... And then she went to go do it all for the first time again. Or to do it all again it for the amazing. first time. It was literally one of the best chapters in the book. Yeah, it was probably it probably was like my It's probably my like bed. I've been thinking about it. Like, like it's yeah. so good. Alice is so smart and You're completely engrossed. Yeah, and you're like, is this mind? happening now? Is it gonna happen in the future? And then you like realize it's like it hasn't happened it yet. It hasn't happened like, yet. Well, and you I... see like, oh my god, this is how Alice uses her powers. And um, I said this earlier to Tatiana, but I was like, no fucking wonder Arrow wanted her yeah. on his team. Because from Bella's perspective, yeah, Alice can, like, see the future, but we don't really know how it works. And from her perspective, it's like, okay, very, that's so Raven-esque. She gets a vision every couple days. Like, it's helpful. Yeah. Sometimes she can purposely look into the future and see something. But, like, typically it's all, like, a big blur. Right. No. The not... 
Yeah, the thing, because it's like in the met before the meadow, they really explain like there's these paths, and she sees the paths and how they trail out in yeah. different futures, and that's like like we like we get the great applicable practical application mm -hmm. <laughs> with like the the after the fight scene and mm -hmm. or around the all the action sequences, but yeah. we get such like a great overview of the process when they're the trying car to like, chase when when like he's trying to make up his mind and like she's going through all the different things she's like oh like this is like 80 percent 70 percent like those these all these threads lead, like, lead yeah. here and these threads lead here versus like, like all the, of like, your ever shifting like vision it's like yeah there's so many options but all of it's going to converge on this one spot that has right. to happen or like this other secondary less likely but spot. like it's but, like, so like, paths. fascinating and it's paths at once. honestly some of the best <sighs> writing in the book i think is it, alice's yeah, stuff it, it made it yeah, that definitely the best addition as far as like development of a the characters. Character. It was so good, yeah. so good. Um, secondary to that, Jasper's powers. C cool Jasper, shit. so fucking cool. Specifically in the scene um, at the baseball game when they're confronting the nomads, which I also liked because and once again the car chase from the yeah focus. and the car chase. Um, from Edward's perspective, you get to see the minds of everyone who's in the confrontation with the nomads. I thought it was fascinating because you get to see Great the the dynamics between uh, Laurent, James, and Victoria in a way that Bella would never have picked up on. Yeah, no. It was so interesting. Plus, you get to see what's actually happening with the rest of the Cullen family, which from Bella's perspective, again, you don't really get because a lot of it is silent. Yeah. And a lot of it's like, what's happening? But Jasper's power during that co that confrontation... So cool. Also, doubles down on the fact that Edward never thinks kindly of his family because he right. looks to the side. He's like, huh, I didn't know Jasper he's could like, do that. I guess his power isn't fucking useless. <laughs> he's like, not only is he, like, surprised that Jasper can, like, do something cool, he's like, oh, he cares about us to... to Enough to use his powers. Bella. Yeah, like, he uses his powers to protect us and her. Like, wow, hmm, I didn't know he actually cared. Yeah, and put it happens in a couple other scenes where yeah. Jasper is, like, a key contributor to, yeah. like, how it's going. And or just even, like, on a smaller scale, like, Emmett doing something protective, and, and Edward's like, oh, wow, like, he deigned to care about, about the person I care about. The person I care about, like, yeah. I expected so little of him. He's He's so... Big yeah. and stupid. And, like, he cared. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, but, yeah, like, okay. Alice's right. powers, Jasper's yeah, powers, very like, cool, a very cool. fucking plus. Good job, Stephanie Meyer. That right. was incredible. Which brings to, like, the action scenes. The action which scenes. are about... Ah. Yes, the confrontation with the nomads, a little bit of the baseball scene. I thought the baseball scene was a little long. We didn't need a play-by-play -play of every single fucking thing that happened. Right. But I it was mean, a little yeah. cool. But, like, starting there... Yes. Onward. Onward. The entire last third of the book. Amazing. Non-fucking stop. It was so good. And I wasn't really looking forward to it because I knew that a lot of it was Edward and Bella separate. But right. I was surprised by how much I liked it. I didn't really like the hunt. We talked about this. It was a little right. boring. But from yeah. the moment that they turn around and start going to Phoenix, like not Bella going to Phoenix, but the second Edward off. goes to Phoenix and like gets off the plane yeah. and realizes Bella isn't there, it's so good. The car chase. Like, was so interesting. Like, the, getting the mirrors lost. All of and them they working look together. I thought that was the so window. funny. It was it's so funny. Home. So they're driving the car, and Edward's, like, has to take an exit. But and there's he, cars in the way, so he's going to take a particularly wide shoulder, but it's yeah. still not wide enough. So Alice looks into the future, sees that Edward's going to squeeze the car and lose both side mirrors, and he's like, I'm going to lose the side mirrors. Emmett, Jasper, and Emmett and Jasper just turn around and, like, use their <laughs> eyes, and then Edward's <laughs> using his mind. <laughs> It's, just it's like, so cool. All of the powers coming together, being used as one. Yes, like a unit, it's as like, it, like they're a, a team. They're team actually a family, family for the like, first oh. fucking time. Yeah, oh, it's so, so good. good. <laughs> oh my god, what else do we like? That was those are the basically all of it. But it's so good. Yeah. The last third of the book is um, <laughs> Bella's personality. We talked about. Okay. she's cool. Yeah, she's cool now. She's nice. She, she has ambitions. To, you know, like. <laughs> so I'm just gonna laugh about the fact that she didn't know she needed a master's to be a yeah, professor, no, which was annoying. But like, yeah, she has some things. Okay, Carlo Christmas. Christmas. Okay, oh, so, so sweet. One of the flashback scenes we get with Edward is a couple years after he was created or yeah. turned into a vampire. Um, I was excited about all that content. Yes, that was very cool. They're like, uh, Carlisle has decided to like test his ability to be near people, but it turns out that it's a setup so that. 
Carlisle could surprise him with a little family Christmas together. He's like a popcorn garden. And they like have like a little like he has a tree, and it's just like Edward goes, oh, it kind of sucks that. It wasn't actually a test of my control, but on the other hand, it means that he trusts me enough that it wasn't actually a test. He just wanted to surprise me with a right. family Christmas. Of course, Edward's like, I literally couldn't care less about Christmas. My soul is dead, but like, but it was. He's so like, I'll be happy for Carlisle. It, it truly oh made me God. like emotional. I when think I, was I really, teared up during it was that. So it was. It was also for me interesting because it was an insight into Carlisle. Yeah. And like, when Carlisle created Edward, he was truly looking for a family yeah like, like he wasn't he wasn't friends. looking to just like make another vampire he wanted like someone to love and yeah. care about because he's like at that point as far as he knew the only vampire in the world who had like that humanity and right. compassion for humans left so it just makes me it so so sweet e like emotional another thing we liked was Angela Weber, yeah, being like the only nice person, right, in Forks High School. She was like a bigger character in, in this book, book than in Twilight. Than the, twi the entire Twilight series, in which she's in like the first book, and then um, Eclipse when Bella's helping her send out her graduation <laughs> right, invitations. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. Um, it was just funny. The but little setup thing was like, like yes, it was frivolous, but like it was cute. It was with Edward, ben. Edward doing yeah with Ben, and like Edward doing something nice mm -hmm. for somebody else. It, yeah, it's rare in the books, but yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. even, like, in his family, you don't seem to do nice, for, anything nice for anyone, yeah, no. but he does it for this random girl, and, like, it might be kind of, like, stupid or, yeah, for both, but it was just nice to see him have fun with something. Yeah, um, something that I wrote that we didn't talk about before, but okay. I wrote down while we were talking, oh, okay, yeah. um, Charlie and Renee's minds, um, like, so the fact that Edward realizes that he can't read Charlie's thoughts. Like, right. not he just, just always thought he was kind of slow. slow. I'm just like, like an so idiot. Like, <laughs> an asshole. He's so rude. Um, <laughs> I know. But, like, um, not to the full extent of, like, not being able to read Bella's mind at all, but that he can only kind of get the essence of what Charlie's thinking Although about. Although he gets some, like, really specific pictures and, like, reads at some point. Well, I think it's also just that Everett is smart. Like, he's not an yeah. idiot. Yeah. And I think partially maybe there was already, like, some evidence from Twilight where he, like, said things where he made very specific conclusions. Yeah. Um, um but, yeah. so, like, that he can't really read Charlie's mind, but that's also in the draft. So, I've known for ten years that, um, right. Edward hasn't been able Not to read Charlie's new. mind. So, it wasn't new to me, although, um, I have a friend who's been texting me, and they were like, oh my fucking god, he can't read Charlie's mind? That's so cool. And I was like, I've been, I've been new, but been, yes, been it's still very it. cool. <laughs> Um, but also, the new thing, the is, new thing is Renee. Yeah. Renee is not another person whose mind you can't really, he can't really read that much, which is what you would assume since Bella is basically a mind mute. mute. But Renee has an extra loud yeah. mind. So in the book, what happens is Edward first thinks that somebody is literally screaming downstairs. Um, and then it turns out that it's just uh, Renee's panicked mind. And then when she speaks calmly, he's like, oh my god, her thoughts are loud enough to actually influence people. Yeah. Like, humans. Humans are, are drawn to her, and they want to help her, and they want to take care of her, and they want right. to, like... Based off, like, what she's thinking and what she's just thinking, what she's, what she's, she's feeling. Because she tends to, like, project her thoughts and emotions. Yeah. And it was so interesting because, like... What kind of humans and what kind of minds are the are the people who would create Bella? And they must also be unique, even though we really don't get that much of Renee in the series. But I just thought that was fascinating. Plus the fact that are Charlie and Renee and Bella the only three people with unique voices that like, Edward's um, ever met in a hundred years? Okay. Like, yes and no, because, like, he just, like, dismissed Charlie as being stupid. That's true. He wouldn't have even noticed if it weren't Bella. Right. So there's, like, some chances that there could have been some other variations on some of it. He just didn't notice. Mm -hmm. Or cause, And plus, because he thought first that Renee was, like, just someone yelling downstairs. He didn't even... It was only because he was concerned with her personally and mm -hmm. that she got nearby that he realized. So, there, like, there could be the off chance and he just, like, reduced it. But I think they're the only people that he's, like, really come in contact with. I just think that's so interesting. Yeah. For me, Very that was cool. something that I really liked. I thought it really added to, like, Bella's backstory, you know? And, like, the way the powers work. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Like, what would Renee be like if she was a vampire? Well, he said scary. Yeah. He was, like, would not want to know. She could probably command people at yeah, will. Yeah, like, that'd be really cool. 
And then, um, something that I wrote on the side, which is not a specific thing, but a general thing. I think Midnight Sun, where is it, did a really good job of fitting in with the rest of the series. Uh, it's a little mean to say, but her writing style hasn't improved in the last uh, changed. 15 years since Twilight was really published. Right on mark. So, this, it fit perfectly into the series, Takes I Takes you think. right back. Like, tone, yeah. sense structure, <gasps> murmuring being used a whole bunch. Abstraction. Every single time um, somebody is distracted, the book actually uses the word abstraction. So, Edward is distracted. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Literally, it happens like five times. Um, specifically, there's a scene where Edward's like, Bella heard the abstraction in my voice. And it literally, she means distraction. Like, why God. use that word? I don't get it. Like, what happened there? I just, like, what the fuck? Why abs? It's like a long word, too. It's not one that you. <laughs> people just would fall back on naturally. What the fuck happened there? It just has the same second part, distraction. I know. What the I don't know. <laughs> that that's my that's my last thought. I have so many thoughts, but I think that's all I can really yeah. put together. We'll also add an hour mark, so I think it's time to wrap this up. I'm so good. concluding thoughts. I would rate this book ten out of ten. Ten out of ten, <laughs> ten, out of 10 <laughs> A plus. Um I give it a hundred percent are there still things that are questionable about it? Yes. Are there things that are problematic just because of inherently who Stephanie Meyer is? Yes. Um, so was Twilight, and this is just also Twilight. So. Yeah, so was Twilight. This is just also Twilight. So was Life and Death. This is just also <laughs> Life and Death. Like, yeah, just so everybody knows, I'm going to be linking in the description box the donation to the Quill cool Ute Tribes. Yeah fun to move their community to a safer area. Um, I've already been donating to them over the past couple months and it's a really good cause and I think it's also especially good since obviously the Quileute tribe was used in the Twilight Saga, I don't think with permission and um, not, I don't think, represented in the best light. So, yeah. um, or used in the most respectful or, like, way. Or researched in Yeah, actual... so um, if you yeah. want to enjoy the Midnight Sun book, I think it's also a good idea to donate. As I have been doing. So that will be linked in the description. My closing thoughts, I loved it. I love Edward and I love Twilight and I love Midnight Sun. Was it worth the wait of 12 years? Yes. Do I still wish it had come out? Not this far when I'm old? <laughs> yes. But also like low-key a perfect gift on this time perfect in our life. Perfect gift during like, this time. Like, during this god fucking yeah. awful year. Yes. So I love Maybe Midnight it was just Sun. meant to be. Like, we were waiting. We were sad we were waiting. Yeah. But, like, this was meant to happen. It's what we needed. So, Midnight Sun. I loved it so much. I hope you like this video. I hope you watch it, even though it's really, really long. Um, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments, and I will read them and respond to every single one, because I could literally talk about this book for hours. We have been talking about this book since I got here at 3 o'clock. It is now, like, 6.30. I don't want to look at the time. I'll see you guys Bye. next time. Bye!